Tammy and I'm from the Ramster Public Library. Welcome to our summer reading program. We're so excited to have you with us today. Uh, if you have not had an opportunity to come by the library and register, there's still time to do that. It's easy to do. Just come by and let us get your name and um, sign you up and you'll get a goodie bag and read with us this summer and you'll be eligible to win some prizes at the end of summer. Also, if you have not come by uh, for your July goodie bag, you can do that now. We have uh, a goodie bag for the month of July that has some items and some craft items in it that goes along with our July programming. So if you have not done either one of those things, just stop by and see us. We would love to see you and have you come by and check out some books and read, read, read this summer, read lots of books. Uh, our theme this summer is Tales and Tales. So all of our programming has been some type of tale. So today's tale is a historical tale, also a patriotic tale. I was real excited. Um, a very important holiday is coming up. You know what that is? July the 4th, you're exactly right. Uh, America's birthday, happy birthday America. We, uh, our nation is 245 years old. She looks great to be 245 years, doesn't she? Uh, so we are excited to celebrate America's birthday. So for our program today, we are going to have a history and patriotic tale. Okay, so it is a story that if you are from this area, you may already know about it. But I did not know about this until I started working at the Ramster Public Library. I have lived in Randolph County my whole life and somehow I missed out on this nugget, this gem, that uh, this piece of history that we have that um, I had not heard about until I started working at the library. And I picked up one of these one day. It's a brochure that we have at the library and it is Deep River State Trail. So uh, back in uh, September, after I started working here, they had a ribbon cutting for a part of the trail in Ramsur that had just opened up. So if you've not been able to do that, uh, come and walk on the trail, do that, it's lots of fun. But also there is a trail in Franklinville and it's called Faith Rock Trail and it tells a little bit about that on the back of this brochure. And I was reading that and I thought, oh wow, that is so neat. And it is a story about a man that lived in the area during the Revolutionary War, not too far from here at all. And he was, his name was Andrew Hunter. So the Revolutionary War, we celebrate America's birthday as uh, in July the 4th, 1776. 1776, but actually the, the Revolutionary War was still going on in 1782. And that's, this is when the story takes place. The man, his name was Andrew Hunter, and he was a patriot. So he wanted freedom in America. There were some people, that was still living here in our 13 colonies that wanted to continue to be loyal to the King of England and wanted to still be part of England. But uh, so that was what the war was about. That was about getting freedom for America. So some people wanted it, some people did not. Andrew Hunter did. And so he was taking his wagon to market one day and he was riding along and a colonel from the loyalist stopped him and was going to, he was, he was wanting to capture him. He had been looking for Andrew Hunter and this man's name was Colonel David Fanning. And he didn't have a good reputation. He'd been really mean to people, you know, really, really bad. So he, he wasn't somebody that Andrew wanted to run into that day. So he caught him and made him get out of his wagon. They had some food in the back of the wagon. So David Man Fanning, he and his men, they started going 
uh, through the wagon and told Andrew Hunter that, you know, he didn't have, uh, that he was going to be captured and uh, he was going to be the prisoner. And he was probably uh, not going to live very long after that. So he was, he had taken him and he was, they didn't tie him up. They had, he had just sat down beside of the tree and Colonel Fanning's men and were going through the wagon looking for something to eat. And so during war times, sometimes you couldn't find a lot of food. So they were probably hungry and was just going through and just eating everything they could out of his wagon. Well, Andrew Hunter noticed that they weren't paying much attention to him. So he started looking where they were at. They were not paying any attention and he got to thinking about how he could run away. So he started planning what he was going to do. So Colonel David Fanning had not tied his horse. He was just grazing there. And so he grabbed some leaves over there, tried to get the horse to come closer to him. And so the horse went over there and was just kind of standing beside Andrew Hunter. And Andrew Hunter jumped up and jumped on the back of that horse and started galloping away just as fast as he could. Well, David Fanning and his, his men didn't know what happened and they started shooting and shooting after him. And he just took off on the back of the horse just as fast as he could. Now, David Fanning was so upset cause Bay Doe was his favorite horse. Oh, he, he just loved that horse and he just couldn't stand the thoughts of losing that horse. And so Andrew Hunter had just stolen it and was running away and the men were starting to shoot at him. He said, no, 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 don't shoot, shoot. He said, you might hit my horse. So, he went, he was trying to find his horse and he went after him and his, went to his house and he could not find what Andrew Hunter or Bay Doe, his favorite horse. Well, he was heading back to Charleston, South Carolina and they were part of the, they were going to be evacuating. The loyalists were going to be evacuating out of Charleston. So he had to go and get down there so he had to leave. But he was very upset cause Andrew Hunter had stolen his horse. So he goes down and he stays in South Carolina until September. And so whenever they were through down there, he came back from Charleston and came to, back to Randolph County to see if he could find his horse. So cause he was just really upset that he couldn't find his horse. So he looked and he looked and, and he just came back here so he could find Bay Doe. Well, it just so happened that he came across Andrew Hunter. And oh my goodness, you know, Andrew Hunter was scared because he had stolen the Colonel's horse, his favorite horse. And he'd been riding around for all these months because it, it was just a good horse. And so they were near Deep River and they were, he was, he saw them coming after him. So he was start, he starts riding his horse and he's, they have him, they have him surrounded. He has nowhere to go because they, the, the David Fanning's men were having him surrounded, so he had, was stuck between them and the river. Well, he came to this place, this high up above the river, and and he goes, "Oh my goodness, what I'm gonna do? It's about 50 feet, and he he can't he can't get away." So he takes Bay Doe, and with a great leap, he jumps off this rock. 50 feet below into the river. And it's amazing they survived. So Andrew Hunter was in the river on Bay Doe and then he started swimming out and getting away from Colonel Fanning and his men. And one of his men said, if he has faith enough to try to escape that way, we will not shoot at him again. And they were just amazed because Andrew Hunter had taken the horse and it's way, way, way up high and jumped down into the river. Thus, the name of the rock is called Faith Rock. And it's just a little bit down, about three miles down the road that you can go. After I had read about this in the brochure, my husband and, and my daughter and I, we went, and we went to Faith Rock one day, one Sunday afternoon. We went taking a hike, and we were 
walking around and I got to stand on Faith Rock and it's really, really, really is high up. I was kind of scared crawling on it, uh, climbing on, on it one time. Real, I was kind of crawling on it one time because it was really high. And it is said to this day, you can still see Beto's footprints. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I looked around to see if I could see them, but I couldn't see them. But I thought that was a really neat story that happened right here in our neck of the woods. And so it's this, it was documented. There's actually a couple of books at the library. This one is the narrative of Colonel David Fanning. So you can find that at the library. And this is the, this is uh, the Colonel's own words. He kind of kept a diary and you can read about that. And there's another book that I found at the, the library, Dan Tucker and other Randolph County heroes and folklore. And this is written by, it's compiled and be written by Barbara Presnell. So it has a lot of neat stuff about Randolph County. Even the title, Dan Tucker. Did you know Dan Tucker was in Randolph County? Y'all know that? Old Dan Tucker was a mighty man. You know that song? Well, he was in Randolph County one time. So that is our historical patriotic tale for our summer reading program. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope you get a chance to go and see Faith Rock. It's really neat and something fun to do. Uh, since we're celebrating the 4th of July, I wanted to share something with you that I like to do for my family whenever we have a um, 4th of July cookout. I make something special, a special dessert, and I was going to do that with you today. All right, this is a strawberry pretzel dessert. And um, what you need to start off with, the first thing we're going to do is we need some pretzels. Pretzels and some butter. It costs four, three-fourths cup of butter, and that is a stick and a half of butter melted. And for this part, it calls for three tablespoons of sugar. I already measured some sugar out in here, so it's three tablespoons. So I will, we do this, we do the crust first because it actually has to bake. So uh, most of this you can do yourself. For the baking part, you'll need your mama, your daddy, your grandma, grandpa, whoever the adult is in their house to help you with that part because we don't want you to get hurt or get burnt. So what we do, is to measure about two and a half cups of pretzels. And what I did is just put, measured up two and a half cups of pretzels and I put them in a baggie, all right? And I left, uh, I couldn't find my rolling pin today. Oh, I left it at home. It's been a long time since I made biscuits. So what I did is just crush them up. So you can do them with the rolling pin or you can just crush, you can put them in your bag and you can just crush, 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 crush. If you're mad at somebody, you can get your all your frustrations out by crushing your pretzels. So just crush, crush, crush. You can do it with your hands or do it with the rolling pin. And I've already gotten some crushed, so I measured two cups out into this bowl. And can you see them? They're just crunchy. They don't have to be super fine. You just crunch them up a little bit. And to this, I added uh, my butter. I melted my butter. This is something else that you need your mama, your daddy, or your grandma, your grandpa, or whoever the doll is in your house to help you with. So I put the butter in there. And I also put sugar. And here's your sugar. And stir that up. All right, so it says stir, 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 stir. Don't make a mess like me. And just stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it. Okay, so whenever you get through, you'll need a nine by 13 casserole dish. So you will just put it in the bottom of your casserole dish after you get it stirred up really good. Let me show you something. I'm not used to being Julia Child. Here we go. All right, so we put it in our casserole dish just like this. And let me hold it up. My table's not quite high enough. And put 
put it in there, just like that. So you have it in the bottom of your casserole dish, okay? And then you put it in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 degrees, okay? So let me go put this in the oven. Okay, I'm back. All right, so I had one done for you. So whenever it comes out, it's gonna look just like this, okay? And this is so good. I have a hard time sometimes just eating this by itself. So you have this baked and you wait for it to cool, all right? So we're gonna set that aside. And our next part is our strawberries, all right? So you will need boiling water. You need two cups of boiling water. And I've already got this measured out there. This is where you need somebody else to help you. This is a little bit different than on the Jello directions. You will need two boxes of Jello, the little boxes. If you find a big box of strawberry Jello, you just need one. So, put the strawberry Jello in there. and strawberries get two packs of those but I was able to get some fresh strawberries so I am going to put my fresh strawberries in here so, mm, strawberries And my water, it's been a little while since I've taken it off the stove, so it wasn't really, really hot. If you're using fresh strawberries, you might want to let your water cool just a little bit. All right, I'm going to set that aside right now because this actually goes on top. And now we have a, another layer that we're going to make. We are going to make the cream cheese layer. Now, if you remember before, Miss Tammy told you that she loves the whipped cream cheese. So this calls for eight ounces of cream cheese. And if you are able to get the whipped kind, that's great. You don't have to work as hard. But if you don't have the whipped, time, whipped kind, you don't have to use it. You just get the regular cream cheese. Just let it get to room temperature. This is three fourths cup of sugar. Yeah, sugar. And then we are going to beat this up. Mix the sugar and the whipped, not the whipped cream, the sugar and the cream cheese really good so they won't be gritty. You see? Just like that. And if you're doing it, this is home and you're doing it with the um, block of cream cheese, you can use the you can use the mixer, yeah. But see, that doesn't take long at all, and it really wouldn't take long with your block of cream cheese. Then, it calls for eight ounces of Cool Whip or whipped cream. So we will just mix that in there. Mmm, good stuff, really good stuff. And mix that together. You don't want to beat it too much because it will make the fluffiness go out of the cool wheel. So, when you get through, it's going to look like that. Alright. And we already have our crust. So, we're going to put this on top of our pretzel crust. Uh, a 
forgot my rubber spatula today. That would have been better. Mmm. Looks good. All right. And you spread it around. All right. One thing that's really important is when you're spreading it, that you go all the way to the edge. So that when you put your strawberry stuff on top of it, it won't leak down to your pretzel crust and make it soggy. Okay. All right. So when you get through, it will look like this. Okay. Now, the next step is we take our strawberry and jello mixture. And I have a slotted spoon, so I can just kind of get the strawberries out. So I'll make sure that there are strawberries evenly distributed. Mmm, doesn't that look good? I am hungry right now. This looks so good to me. All right, so good. So good, so good, so good. Woo-wee! I almost filled that up. So whenever you do that, what you must do, be very careful, is put it in the refrigerator, okay? That's important that you put it in the refrigerator. Let me go put this in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm back. And when you get through, and this will take, this is through. Miss Tammy had one made earlier. So it didn't really get gelled that fast because if you ever waiting on jello, sometimes it takes a while. So now it is a strawberry pretzel dessert and any other time of the year that i make this this is exactly what it looks like but for the fourth of july i like to do something different okay miss tammy most of the time in years past i will go outside and pick some blackberries because about the time that blackberries come in it's about fourth of july and i can usually find a few because i want to put some blue blackberries on one corner of my st strawberry pretzel dessert i almost put it in a square up at the top and you're going to see just a minute this is miss tammy's personal recipe right here this part that i like to do all right so you can have it just in one corner and then this is what makes it special I get some whipped cream and I do a little stripe across the top there and there And there. Uh -oh, looks like it's leaving now. And there, oh, that's fun. And then I put some stars on it. And ta da! You have a flag. Can you see? Whoops! Make a bump. Let me see if I can fix that real fast. There we go. And it's a good idea, yeah, before your strawberry jello gets congealed, congealed, to put your uh, blueberries in so that they will not fall like that. But it makes a flag. One more time. Whoop, there you go. It'll still be good either way. 
So I hope you've had fun today. I hope you get a chance to go see Faith Rock or, or uh, come to the library and read some books this summer and make uh, a patriotic dessert. And um, I hope you have a good 4th of July and hope we see you soon at the library. Bye-bye.